She's electric. She's from a family full of eccentrics. Okay, so I'm back on a zero. This time the SRF. The last zero I reviewed was the DSR Black Forest, and I wasn't overly enamoured by it. The ergonomics didn't really suit me. It felt a little bit like a toy town bike. And with the panniers and everything else, plus the weather, it was cold, one or two degrees. I had rain and drizzle in my time with it, and uh, I just didn't really gel with it. Now, one thing straight away I noticed different to the DSR is there are riding modes on this bike, uh, and that is, if I can get this to work... So we can change from street, eco, rain, beast plus, and sport. So I started off in street, and uh, already the bike, the kill switch is on. This is ready to go. It's now hit 30 degrees while I've been sat here. I'm getting roasting. Let's get moving. And uh, the, th the thing that still gets me about this is just that quietness of the bike. Some people will love it some people will dislike it i've actually grown to quite like it and if you've not seen the other review or if you've not looked at any electric bike reviews which i'm assuming you have if you're watching this um, but it is a, a whole different concept so despite from just the, the the powertrain that you have and the lack of fluids there's also a lack of gears it's just a twist and go i've got no clutch here i've got no foot control down there now the first impressions are the riding position is very comfortable. It is more sporty, you are more canted forward than you would be obviously on the DSR which is a more kind of adventure spec. But um, just the riding position and from the look of the outside of the bike it's kind of, it's got a touch of, uh, of Ducati about it uh, which is no bad thing. Silence in the quiet country lane. Straight away I can feel that the show of suspension on this bike much more sophisticated than the DSR and uh, it is uh, so far very comfortable and also very lithe. It feels like a really good control. It is a heavy bike. It's around about the 240 kilos mark, which is something you've got to expect with the, anything that's got a, a huge lithium battery in it. But it certainly doesn't feel like that. It's, uh, it does feel very nimble. We'll talk about the range and the charging a little bit later in more detail. But the range for this bike, depending on how you ride it, is around about 100 miles. If you ride it in eco mode, you can probably squeeze 120 out of it. Uh, if you put it in beast plus mode and you're hacking it around everywhere, that's probably going to drop to something more like 60. Now, as I've said previously, range for me is is less of an issue um, because i know plenty of people have got bikes that would struggle to get 100 miles out of a tank of fuel the difference is they can pull into one of the numerous fuel stations here in the uk and fill up in five minutes and be on their way that's not the case with electric bikes but things are improving this has the optional charge tank fitted now of course the one big advantage of having the charge tank on the bike is you get to access the much more powerful chargers the 50 kilowatt hour chargers uh, like this one and the advantage obviously is that these are tethered so you have to cable with that and you don't have to carry a cable around with you now with these bigger machines you are getting the charge time down quite considerably obviously not as quick and convenient as conventional combustion fuel but we're getting to the point where uh, a 10 or 15 minute break for a coffee and uh, can get quite a decent amount of range back into the bike. Now in my DSR video I talked about the numerous companies that have chargers and the different accounts and apps that I had on the phone. They're now getting much better. Instavolt is one where you can just use contactless payment. You don't have to have an account set up. So you tap your card, plug it in, do your charging, away you go. And I imagine over time that the vast majority of charging stations are going to move to this method. And that's going to make things much much easier the zap map is an invaluable tool to have on your phone just to be able to see what charges there are around if they're being used and if there are any faults on them so definitely an app worth downloading i'm going to extricate myself from the uh, 
the gym. The gym's closed currently, and it's the, the closest 50 kilowatt charger that uh, there is to me, so I've had to hop the fence to get in. Oh, I hope they won't mind me doing that. Uh, just took the opportunity to overtake a Tesla on an electric bike. Now a lot gets talked about the power of these bikes and obviously with an electric motor the torque is instantaneous you get all the power and all the torque. Thankfully this has traction control so it can help take care of that. Not so bad in, in, on a day like today but I did in the wet with the DSR particularly with the semi knobbly tyres um, there were a few tricky moments. Um, but in any mode you've still got that instant, a twist of the wrist and you're there, so you'll see that on, I'm just following the Mercedes here at about 50 miles an hour, around this corner it will straighten up and unless he really tows it, um, I'll go past him and you can see what the acceleration is like. Yeah, very stable in the corners, we'll get the tractor out of the way. Right, we've got a bit of space now, let's go. And you can see how quickly that turn picked up. There's no loss of that torque. There's no having to obviously dip a gear to get it in the right rev range. The motor just goes. And this machine will pull through to about 120 miles an hour. And you can't really use that speed on the roads in the UK. Um, for me, it's more interesting about the torque and acceleration. That's where the fun is. And this is what this has got in spades. Obviously another positive point on a day like today when it's as hot as it is, is we've got no hot exhaust, we've got no hot engine sitting underneath you. The only heat I can feel is the heat from the ambient temperature of the air. Yeah, now even in street mode you can see how quickly that picked up for an overtake. Now this is a kind of a bumpy-ish kind of road. I came down here a little, you know, a couple of days ago on the Africa Twin, and um, it it was just like a magic carpet over this. I'm feeling the bumps a little bit more, but you kind of expect that. This is a sportier setup on this bike, but control is good under brakes. We've got very little dive and everything just feels really solid and secure and glued to the road. This is running uh, Pirelli Diablo Rosso Corsa tyres which are a fantastic tyre in these conditions. I've used those on uh, Triumph Thruxton and I uh, really like those. Now you've also got quite a bit of control over what's happening in the mode. So you can use the standard modes. If you go into Beast mode or Beast Plus mode then you have more uh, options to be able to change the settings so that's the, the way that the power is delivered, um, the engine braking or the regenerative braking you can turn that down or up but yeah I found eco mode to be uh, actually pretty good yeah it does dull down the power um, so it doesn't accelerate as fast and you haven't got as fast a top end it's you know just after 70 miles an hour it starts to run out of steam but the whole idea of that mode is to give you as much range as possible and uh, sometimes if you're heading somewhere and if you think you're getting a bit low on range it's quite nice to be able to just kick it down into eco mode and try and save as much of the battery as you can. Yeah, that could be one of the problems either. He's a dozy builder or he just didn't hear the bike coming. Um, and talking about the noise and the lack of noise, and people say, well, it's dangerous. You should really have a noisy bike so people hear you. I think, as that was an example, I think pedestrians are going to be the only problems. I think in modern cars, they're so well insulated that um, I don't think many modern cars really hear bikes unless you've got a really obnoxiously loud exhaust I don't think they hear them anyway, certainly when they're coming from behind. So I think the noise issue on these, other than the, just the, the, the environmental side, which is nice, you know, you're not going to spook horses in the country lane, you know, it's not annoying anybody. Pedestrians still look with their ears largely. We've grown up 
with the internal combustion engine to, to listen. If you can't hear anything come in, you're less likely to do that check. I think it's a subconscious thing that everybody does. And so the only thing I worry about on this bike when I'm riding is looking out for pedestrians. So if anybody knows this area, you'll realize I'm coming into Finchin Field, a bit of a bike in Mecca. And uh, actually, yeah, it's chock a block today. I never usually stop here because I'm not interested in stopping when it's like this. I'd rather ride. But um, it's a very scenic place if you've never been here. It's worth coming to. Finching Food itself is a hub. It's generally because the roads that come from here in every direction are just absolutely fantastic biking roads. Whee. But overall build quality of these bikes looks great. The trellis frame looks fantastic. And considering that big lump in the middle is just a battery, the machine work they've done on it, I think, is, uh, is really nice. And they've really made a, a feature of it. It's, it's, it's a handsome bike. I don't think it's an ugly looking bike. And the, the fact that there's no exhaust and pipe work and everything gives it a really clean look. As an aside, I just wondered, and feel free to comment down below, with all these loads of modes and changeability that you have, how many people actually do play around with them? Now I've got a little parking spot up here that I use quite quickly, so I'll just give you a quick look around the bike. Obviously you've got to try and imagine it, and I'll probably put some other pictures up because this has got the English electric decals emblazoned all over it, which um, no offence to them, kind of spoil the lines a little bit. It's a bit busy. I don't think Alec will mind me saying that. It stands out, that's for sure. Can look at this, what a wonderful day. Okay, here we go. So let's have you give you a quick look. Now this bike has been fitted with a Jivy top box, which I've taken off. So again, you've got to try and imagine it without that there. They do that because they give you the charging cables. Um, so that you've got those but that is the bike and I think it's a really handsome looking thing let's say quite Ducati-esque bit of MV Augusta and that electric motor just makes everything really clean and tidy so this is the motor and the 14.4 kilowatt battery so obviously in terms of componentry, you've got a battery, you've got the motor, and then you've got all the charging bits in here, which sit just in there. Comfort-wise, really good for a pillion, decent-sized pillion seat. I found this to be a really supportive seat. It's a nice riding position. It is just a very handsome bike. So it's quiet here. Let's just give you a quick impression. Still in street mode what the acceleration is like because that's a really key fun part of riding electric bikes okay let's go so even in street mode it still picks up and goes very very well beast plus mode see what that does Again, stand and start, and off we go. And straight away you can see there's a little bit more there, urgency, I can feel it, trying to lift the front wheel off the ground. So it is, you do have to concentrate and hang on to the bars, because if you do just turn the, give it a twist, it's like somebody's trying to pull the bike out from underneath you. Uh, that could be intoxicating. When I read the comments on my channel, I know that uh, people are not backwards in coming forward. Um, but again, I'd be interested to hear your views on electric bikes. And I'll pose a question is, do you think in the next five years, you may well change your bike or purchase an electric motorcycle? I'll put the prices on the screen because that's an obviously another big issue with these bikes. So though the price of the bike is higher initially 
the ongoing costs are lower because there's very little maintenance. There's no fluid to have to worry about. There's no internal engine parts to have to worry about. Really, when it comes to servicing, there's a couple of bits that need to be checked on the motor, but it's, it's brakes, tires, brake fluid is the only fluid on the, the bike as a whole and uh, it's belt driven so maintenance is really low and uh, servicing is uh, really low as well and can be done very quickly. I'd like to say thank you to English Electric Motor Company for loaning me this bike to bring you this review and the reason I mention them now is because these guys can offer a mobile servicing option for you if you were to buy one of these bikes so um, instead of having to take it back to the dealer they can come and do it on site because there's minimal tooling and minimal equipment that's required to carry out that service I'll put a link to their website down in the description so if you want to go away and have a look at the full range of bikes that they do then uh, and find out a little bit more about it then please go and pay them a visit oh here we go let's just have a go through the puddle and try not to get myself electrocuted yep no survived that now i find this to be a very charming and relaxing but also quite thrilling and enjoyable bike to ride uh, it's certainly got the dynamics of a big naked it's got the performance of a sports bike um, the quietness, uh, I'm, it hasn't bothered me, it's actually quite relaxing. I've been doing quite a bit of this riding without any earplugs and other than the, the little bit of wind noise on the helmet, you know, it's very quiet. Uh, I think my neighbours appreciated that when I rolled it out of the garage early on Sunday morning and uh, probably made the older members of the community think that uh, there was a milk float coming down the road. <laughs> <laughs> it's still what it reminds me of but as from my point of view would i own one of these yes i would would i buy one now if i had the money i probably would have this as a second bike i've enjoyed riding it whereas it does fall down in some respects if i have to cover lots of ground over a short period of time i go out uh, for a, a bimble around these country lanes with a friend of mine and we're out for a couple of hours and we're normally ticking off 70 or 80 miles somewhere around that is a, is a, is a good couple of hour ride around the lanes non-stop uh, and you can do that on this bike easily if you're commuting as long as you've got somewhere to charge it during the day even for me a commute into london is about 55 miles into the heart of the city um, i could probably just about squeeze a run there and back but if you've got somewhere to charge it ride it in plug it in ride it home it's great and it's only really at the long distance mileage or if you're out for the day riding with a group of friends and you're off down to uh you know gonna do a couple of hundred miles then yeah it needs to be a consideration and obviously if you're riding with people that are riding combustion bikes you know you're going to be holding them up a little bit where they stop for uh fuel and are done in five or ten minutes then you know you're going to be hanging around but as I say, we're getting much closer to the days where there is a bit more parity. And uh, I've certainly enjoyed riding. Let's just dispatch with this little scooter rider. I've certainly enjoyed riding the bike. I'm going to follow their development with interest. Thank you to Alec and the guys at English Electric Motorcycle Company for loaning me this bike to experience it. Um, I'm hoping that I can get on the SRS pretty soon. It's essentially the same bike as this, but with a fairing, and it's a, I think it's a, a beautiful looking machine. And it'd be interesting to see how that uh, turns some heads. And it does turn heads. It's a really interesting to ride. People do kind of look at it. You can see the guys that are, that are, that are maybe bikers. I mean, it's certainly the way to go. I think obviously, you know, with the, the, the electric scooters, but they go for the big bike. Don't we stopped, and then you pulled you off pulled ahead off. of us. Mike said, that was electric. We go. I mean, I've driven the Tesla, yeah. you know, a long time ago, and the, the first big one. They go like the yeah. Tesla's the same. I can't believe how fast it went. No, go. It's this, this is the same. Will it use the same charge points as cars? Yes. Yeah, so it's a Type 2 charge, just goes in there, yeah. plugs in there. 
And who make is it zero? Zero they? make it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. It's it's um, I think it's it's not going to replace normal combustion engine bikes. But it's good. I think well, they're going to run along. We went, we went from two strokes to four strokes and all the rest. Of exactly. It. This That's is definitely. I mean, as I said, we've been talking about the bike show and how we're going to have to move forward with it all, etc. And it is, you know, it is the way to go. Okay. Cheers. Have a good day. See you later. I hope this has been a pretty informative and, and useful video. If you're considering uh, an electric bike, then I would certainly suggest getting in touch with the guys at English Electric and uh, arranging a test ride and having a look at what they do. If you've got any comments or questions, uh, then certainly put those in the comment section down below. And as the sun's starting to come out now, it gives me an opportunity to say thanks for watching and until next time, take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.